My name is Andriana Varnovich. I'm a research assistant with the Transnational NGO Initiative and also a Hubert Humphrey Fellow here at the Maxwell School. I'm undertaking a brief career interview with uh, an internationally known activist, Mr. Srdja Popovic, who is also executive director of CANVAS, which stands for Center for Applied Nonviolent Action and Strategies. Mr. Popovic, thank you so much for being here with us and for sharing your expertise. I'm proud and it's a pleasure. I'd like to start off by hearing your own brief explanation of your work um, in CANVAS and the work of, of Center for Applied Nonviolent Action and Strategies. Well, I mean, I started as an activist when I was 19 in a small country of Serbia opposing the very bad government and a bunch of wars mm -hmm. and foreign sanctions and a lot of bombing. Uh, I was lucky to be grown in the family of two journalists, meaning that I kind of walked through the life with my eyes open. I had a brother who was a rock star, so I was kind of introduced to this culture of rebellion very early in the process. I also had a great mentor, the first democratically elected prime minister of Serbia, Zoran Džinđić, who recognized the talent in many young people in Serbia and really involved them through the party work into the things which really happened later in development of our career. I spent uh, some of my life as a revolutionary, maybe 1993 and two, all the way to 2000. I spent three years in the Serbian National Assembly mm -hmm. after the revolution for the first three years. And then 2003, we got started getting invitations from a different movement throughout the globe. Uh, blame it on a movie called Bring In on a Dictator. It's a very good documentary, $5 well spent on Amazon if you want to watch it. And it tells a compelling story of the Serbian revolution. It was translated into 16 different languages and it can be found on a very strange places like Burmese monasteries where, where the monks started the Safran revolution or Iranian black market. Mm -hmm. So there are many activists sharing this thing mm -hmm. in the world. Uh, basically, the work of Canvas, to cut the long story short, we try to make people power user friendly. We try to find the ways on this nonviolent movement, how they function. We try to find a way to teach people efficiently mm -hmm. how they function. But throughout this process, we also constantly learn and research why some of these movements succeed and why some fail. Mm -hmm. So you partially already uh, answered the second question. So you uh, gave us a brief overview and what took you uh, your career path up until becoming an internationally known activist. Can you describe your typical day, uh, whether you're in the office or somewhere abroad giving a training? Well, basically, uh, my typical days can be threefold. Uh, I, I will start with the anecdote. I have, a, I have an office in Belgrade run by, by, by actually it's five, seven people working there and a bunch of the interns. And part of my work is managing this office and working with these guys. But they are so good in managing the office that they often manage me. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's like managing the office is one part of the work. Uh, basically, I, I do three different type of things. Mm -hmm. One, uh, I'm privileged to work with some of the brightest activists in the world. So once or twice a year, three times a year, I will meet these activists and do the workshop. This is job basically done by Canvas trainers. Mm -hmm. Many of them, 12 of them exist in this world. They are coming from successful struggle. Second, uh, we try to to understand how to provide more tools. So every, every now and then we'll come out with a book. Uh, I co-write and cooperate with people in writing these books, whether this is Canvas 50 Crucial Points, Canvas Core Curriculum. We are now developing many interesting tools. We try to find as 50 crucial tips, like the video tips, which can be one and a half minute and translated into many different language. We try to come out with a new manual called Make, make Oppression Backfire, like mm -hmm. what are the cool things you can do to make your opponent being sorry for oppressing your movement. So we develop a lot of tools, and I work a lot on the tools. A third, last but not of least importance, uh, we see the growing interest in, in the universities across the globe for this issue. So I teach a course in, in Belgrade, Factor of Political Science, Colorado College, Greenville College, and recently NYU. Uh, on strategic nonviolent struggle. So very unlike the work with activists, mm -hmm. which used to be m majority of my work in the first few years, now we developed a whole new cohort of trainers which are capable of dealing with this. Mm -hmm. And they are also diverse by race, language, so they are more accommodated mm -hmm. to, to, to working with the activists. And I do more of the, of the traveling and giving speeches and dealing with interviews, developing tools and mm -hmm. trying to teach on the faculties. Mm -hmm. so, so I grew up a bit. So you mentioned that you do a lot of training uh, the trainers, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, in that sense, can you give us some advice about the, the essential skill set that the students should develop 
especially those that are interested in nonviolent action or advocacy in general? What are the typical skills that they would need? Well, first of all, when you look at the set of the skills, they need some analytic skills. They need to understand how these struggles work. They need, to, second, they need to understand in principle that it's a very dynamic process and the power moves in the society. Third, they need to understand that the society is a, is a structure based on the fact that if people do not obey, rulers cannot rule. It's very useful if they understand also the principles of nonviolent struggle, unity planning, and nonviolent discipline, whether they involve in human rights, anti-corruption, environmental movements, movements for democracy, movements against censorship, which is basically the, the one principal strategic sets of skills. On the level of practical skills, uh, public speaking is very useful, meaning how to recruit people, managing the volunteers. This is the, all of these new movements really know how to use their volunteers. When you look at a non-violent movement, their biggest advantage compared to the violent movement is that you can literally recruit anybody, young people, old people, retired people. The real trick for a successful non-violent movement is to find a place for everybody because people join the groups in order to do things. And if you don't find a suitable way for them to do things, they leave. So it's not just having the membership on a piece of paper. This is really making these people active. The Serbian model which we, which we advise is of keeping up with the volunteers and keeping up this machine working is called Recruit, Train, Act. So you recruit a person, you put a little bit of training so really the person feels that you're investing into him or her, and then you make a place for this person to act. Whether this is acting on a specific skill, like somebody knows how to design a thing, here is the leaflet to be designed, or this is like, you know, we need more people on a protest march, so please come that day. But it's very important for these people to see, to feel that they are part of the movement, otherwise they would leave. So these are all very, very important skills. Also, there are several skills which are coming up with this new movement, technological skills, the way you build a website, the way you design. Uh, uh, actually, the, the way these movements are designed and branded are making all the difference. So make sure that you have a good designer in your group, definitely building a website, also dealing with the key resources, management skills, human uh, recruiting skills and also fundraising skills because obviously you need money to run the show. So these are this is a very variable set of skills. The trick is to develop an easy training program for the movement so you can really equip people with the skills. Well, this was a very comprehensive answer which basically wraps up our because interview. Because Serbs talk too much. <laughs> but thank you so much for your time. Thank you.